Okay, welcome back. Welcome to the Civil Service Fast Stream and Diversity Internship Program video interview webinar. That should say video interview webinar, so apologies. Um, so welcome. So just a quick um, what to expect from the webinar. So we will go through what a video interview is and an overview Look, having a go through the have an overview about the what the civil service are looking for, and what to expect. I.e., how long does would a video interview take, and you know, in terms of um, what devices to use, and also go through a short uh, introductory guidance videos on the platform and the practice questions. We we'll get the chance to look for some practice questions. I know some of you mentioned that you like to know what type of questions to what type of questions that will be asked, and. And also look at the competency. So the particular areas that the civil service will be focusing on um, in the video interview. And then hopefully I will get a chance to, uh, we'll also look through the STAR technique, which I believe some of you would have uh, used in the past or be familiar with already. And some hints and tips. And also what to do before you get started. And hopefully we'll get a chance to practice. So if any of you would like to, you know, volunteer yourself to practice at the end, if we have some time, then we'll be able to do so and then use the last, the latter end of the uh, webinar to go through some questions. So we're aiming to be finished by five o'clock. Um, so I'll at least go through the presentation quickly so we get a chance to really practice and ask, go and then conduct some Q and A's. So that's what to expect uh, in today's webinar. So first of all, what is a uh, sorry so first of all what is a video interview so for those of you who are already familiar with a video interview or well, have done a video interview you know exactly what a video interview is in essence a video interview is a is a job interview that takes place remotely and uses technology as the communication medium and there are two types of video interviews. One is known as a synchronous and the other is known as asynchronous interview. So synchronous interviews are conducted live over the internet, um, such as using Skype or FaceTime to conduct an interview. Whereas uh, a, an asynchronous video interview is pre-recorded by the job seeker and submitted to the employer. So in this case, you'll be taking part in a asynchronous video interview. The reason why most employers or most of the large, if not all of the large employers are starting to move uh, towards using video interviews is to reduce what is known as unconscious bias and to ensure that people are not, because you know, face-to-face -face interview posed a potential barrier for people from certain backgrounds to be successful uh, or to be selected, particularly people from a diverse background, such as a black, Asian, minority ethnic group. So most employers are now using, uh, utilizing video technology to reduce that, um, to reduce that uh, potential barrier. So I believe about six, five percent of graduate employers are all now using video interview to conduct uh, to, to interview candidates. So in essence, so what a video interview is, is conducting an interview remotely using video technology as the medium of communication. So with the civil service video interview, um, it lasts approximately, it will last approximately 20 minutes, consisting of eight questions. As I mentioned, the responses will be recorded on a video platform and you can use your phone, tablet, PC, or, uh, uh, or a laptop to record your answer. There is a short introductory guidance video on the platform just to prepare you before you get started with the real thing. And you also be provided with practice question for you to record your answer to before you get started. And you can record your answer as often as you wish, just to get familiar, to get comfortable, and to really, um, yeah, just become comfortable before doing your, before recording the answers to the real questions. One thing to note is once you record your answer, you can only do so once. So it's important that before you start that you are ready and you're ready to go and you have your examples ready because you only get 
want chance to do it. Again, with video interviews, unlike a face-to-face -face interview, you know, you would not be asked a follow-up question. So you only be expected to respond to the question that you're being asked. And once you're done, you move on to the next question. So this is perhaps one of the most important part before starting your video interview. So what to expect? What are the civil service assessing on? So the video interview, the, the questions, ask questions around about your experience and also what you enjoy and find motivating. So this is often known as a strength-based interview. So it's a combination of a strength-based interview and competency interview. So what is the difference between the strength-based interview and the competence-based interview? With strength-based interview, it's usually around things that you enjoy, things that you find motivating, is to really get to understand you as a person and your and what energizes you, your energizers. Whereas a competency-based interview are based on the, so you're being assessed against the competencies of the employer. In this case, the competencies that the civil service will be focusing on in the video interview stage are listed as uh, listed on the screen, such as collaborating and partnering, building capability for all, managing a quality service, and delivering at pace. I hope by now you all would have had a chance to go through the competency framework and would have, and would have uh, you know, familiarized yourself with the competencies and understand what they are in relation to the civil service. If you haven't done so or feel like you'd like to uh, you know, do some further studying or research about the, competency, about the competencies, I will suggest that you do so before you get started. So these are the things, the particular areas to be aware of that the civil service will assess you on for the video interview. As I mentioned earlier, what a strength-based interview is, is looking at you're being asked questions about, you know, what do you enjoy? What do you, what motivates you? What energizes you? And so on and so forth. So this interview will be based particularly around uh, a combination of strength-based and competency-based uh, questions. We'll get the chance to practice some strength-based interview questions um, shortly. So how do you conduct, what's the best way to deliver your answer? Again, you have a very short time frame to respond to, a que to, to, respond to the questions. The question is, how do I prepare for that? So again, most of you, if not all, would have either been involved or used the STAR technique or come across the STAR technique. So, what that, so basically, the, this is a framework for those of you who are new to the to STAR technique to really to use as a guide to respond to the questions, i.e., say what the situation is, what the task is, what action you took, and what results you came up with as a result of the action. It's generally advised to spend about 10% of your time in, on the situation. Just a quick summary overview, a snapshot. What, is this, what was the situation that you had to work on? Hey, we're set, for, you can use an example such as, you know, we were given a task to develop a policy paper for Brexit. That could be an example of, a, of that's the situation. And the task is you want to spend about 15% of your time on this. So you have about 20 minutes, eight questions. So if you split that by 20 divided by eight, you have about two and a half minutes per question. So you want to spend about 30 seconds reading the question, make sure you understand it, and then respond. So 10% of that two minutes you want to spend to explain the situation, 15% you want to spend to exp explain the task, and you want to spend most of your time in the action. So you know, what action did you take? Often we, this part, some people tend to go to explain what the team did, which is good. Obviously, you want to show that you are a good team player. However, what employers really want you to say in this section is to see what actions you took in the situation. So if you're working with, within a team, what was your role? What were you responsible for? What contribution did you make in that team project? So this is what they want to know and understand or hear from you. And then the last 25 minutes you want to spend summarizing the, you know, just the, the outcome or the results of what you did. And there's an addition, which is normally, which is known as a reflection, you know, i.e. what could you have done differently um, 
if the, if the results wasn't what you expected, were there any lessons learned? Is there anything you would, you would do differently? And if so, what would they be? So that's something you can just add as that. You're probably thinking, how can I get all of that done in two minutes? And this is where practice beforehand comes in handy. So what you really want to do, what we normally advise, what I normally advise in this case is, you know, look through each of the competencies, you know, and think, okay, where have I demonstrated? Have there been situations where I've demonstrated these competencies, such as, so for example, has there been a situation where you've de demonstrated collaborating and partnering? So in the case of the civil service, so what do they mean by collaborating and partnering? By this, they mean that they're looking for people that are skilled, people that are team players, i.e. requires obviously, people that are able to work collaboratively, sharing information appropriately, and building supportive, trusting, and professional relationships with colleagues and a wide range of people within and outside the civil service, whilst having the confidence to challenge assumptions. So with this, you want to ask, actually, has there been a situation where I've demonstrated collaborating and partnering? Has there been a situation where I've demonstrated building capability for all, i.e. having a strong focus on continuous learning for myself and others and the organization? Further to that would be, where I've been open to learning about keeping up my own knowledge and skill set. So you want to demonstrate where you've, where you've, um, situations where you've demonstrated these, these uh, competencies and then what action, what, what was the task and then look into what the actions are. Basically prepare answers to using each of the, for each, um, uh, each, each competencies, prepare examples using the start techniques and structures. What that does, it helps you to, you know, be ready. So on the day, you know exactly what to say, you know exactly how to deliver your answer and how to get your points across. With this, you want to be as succinct and straight to the point and not spending too much time and, you know, waffling on, which I have the tendency to do sometimes as well. And perhaps I have done during this webinar is human nature. Well, the more we practice and focus on the points that we want to make, the better we get at, um, you know, expressing our, uh, uh, getting the points across and using the start technique as a framework to get that point across. I always use the example as a, the start technique being like a, a glass which holds water. So, you know, by that I mean, it's just, uh, it just helps you to, you know, to, to, to guide your answers in, a, in an effective and constructive manner that helps the interviewer to know and be able to see clearly the actions that you took and also how does and how your answer relates to the competencies and what they are looking for from the civil service. So I hope that's clear. Any question on this before I move to the next slide? Any question on the STAR technique and how to use it? If no questions, you, if you prefer to save your questions to the end, uh, you know, by means you can do so. And then um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So, hints and tips. As it says on the screen, so the first thing you want to do is to watch the short introductory guidance videos um, to understand what they're asking for you, just to familiarize yourself with it first of all, know what to do before you get started. Again, the temptation is, uh, again, another human nature, I, I fall, I, I am guilty of this, is once I'm given a task, I straight away just start working on it before reading the instruction. And more often than not, uh, when, when I do this, I actually don't allow, I find out that I don't actually perform to the best of my ability because I haven't taken the time to fully understand what they're asking, from, or asking of me. So I end up responding to the question based on my own assumption or based on what I think. And this is where most people go wrong. And this is why I was highlighting the competencies because the tendency is, as human nature, we would go based on our previous experiences when responding to interview questions and failing to really, to realize that the civil service, all the questions are based on the competencies, particularly the competency areas that, I've just, that we went through earlier. Um, so, before answering the question, just know that every question are going to be based on those competency areas. By reading the instruction, no one's expected, would help you to just articulate and give the interviewer, in this case, give the civil service what they are asking for and not what you think they are asking for. 
And this is where most people go wrong. So again, you want to be, you want to engage with the questions. You want to think about, you know, what you're good at, what you enjoy and what motivates you. And by engaging with the questions is you want to be, you know, positive. You want to be energetic. You want to portray a positive body language and, you know, maintaining good eye contact. And one of the advice that was the, that's also given is, you want to dress for an interview as if you're going to a face-to-face -face interview. So i.e. wear what you normally wear, your full business gear, because it sets you up and that gives you the, the right frame of mind as well um, when responding to the questions. Again, aim to spend about 2.5 minutes and 250 words per question. Again, this is unofficial. And this is why practicing this, using the STAR technique to practice in advance will help you to get your answers to around about 250 words in a um, and get into the habit of that. Again, this is about short, powerful answer, impactful answers, what you've done, give an example and move on. Again, as I make sure you thank the interviewer after you are done, answering the question, the last question, and if appropriate, state your interest in the position. Again, how you normally behave in a face-to-face -face interview, you want to do the same here as well. Again, the final one, which is really important, is to focus on the now. You cannot control the future. You don't want to be thinking, you know, bothering yourself about, oh, am I going to make it? What if I don't make it to pass this stage? We don't know. No one knows if that's going to happen or not. Or you focus on what you're in control of, which is just the present moment. So here and now by just articulating yourself, getting your points across, saying what you have done and saying this in a powerful, effective manner. And if so long as you've covered every area, and cover the competencies, then, you know, as I say, leave it to the hands of the decision maker. You know, just play your part and leave the rest that's not within your control out of the picture so that you can be fully focused and present in the moment. And just want to touch up again on uh, body language. Again, we can go through this during the Q&A sessions. People, one of the things that we get is conducting a video interview. And I also find it, I, I've also experienced this as well, is um, when speaking to a phone or to a video recording yourself, it feels weird. You have a lot of uh, feedback in, you know, just your mind throwing up all sorts of scenarios saying, you know, some could be positive, some could also be negative. And it's very easy for us to be distracted by these things. Um, which is normal, you cannot control that. You know, you cannot control what the mind feeds back to you. So expect that this may happen. However, um, one way to, to, you know, counter this is to have your answers ready, have what you're going to say as examples ready, because one thing that you cannot beat, one thing that the mind cannot beat is something that you know that you are certain about, something that you're sure about, that you know for a fact that you have done. You know, the mind cannot beat that. Even when the mind tries to throw negative feedbacks at, to, at you, you know, you know you've done this. So that's really where how you can hone your confidence by being in that place of I know I've done this, I've done the preparation work, and once you've done the preparation, and you find yourself in that place, you would naturally overcome the back chat or the chat that the mind sends back towards you. But the reason why people become overcome by that is because they haven't done the taking the time to actually prepare themselves and feel comfortable before starting the interview. So that's just one final thing I just want to highlight um, in this section. Again, finally, um, before you get started, you want to, you know, make sure that you're in a quiet environment. Again, one thing that I do before I start the webinars is I put a sign on the door so that my colleagues know that I'm, recording, I'm, I'm on a live webinar and I put a do not disturb sign. So that's something that I would suggest that you do put a sign on your door, say, please do not disturb live video interview going on, or video interview um, um, going on, please do not enter or disturb. Just make sure you do that. Again, set aside an hour of when you're free from distractions to get your mind to relax before you get started. And whatever, what, if there's anything that you do to get your mind into gear, please do so. If it, something might be listening to music, listening to, you know, words of information, listening to, you know, whatever, you're, whatever you do to generate that energy, you know, do so and get your mind really upbeat before you get started. And um, again, dress presentably and have ad adequate lighting in the room because the last thing you want to do is to record where uh, no one can actually see your face. Again, that's something you want to avoid. And also is to speak calmly and, 
and slowly um, when responding to the questions. It's not about, you know, you don't want to speak too fast because it might become challenging for the interviewer to hear you uh, when they watch the video afterwards. So you're going to be calm, relax, slow your tone, slow your pace and get your answers across effectively. And that's what I would say. I don't know if there's anything else to add in this sex section. Um, some people, what they do is they put a photo of someone that, it, that they find inspiration, inspiring. It might be a family member. It might be a picture of yourself put in front of you so that your mind, you want to create an environment basically where your mind is able to focus on the positive or, or focus on things that would you know, stimulate it in a, in a more positive manner before you get started. So there's other uh, tips as well. So we now get a chance to, to practice some questions. And so here are some of the example questions, examples of a, a strength-based interview questions. Um, so we get the chance to practice this with some of you guys, whoever is willing to do so, uh, please let me know and we can promote you so I can promote you to so others can actually hear your, uh, to hear you. Again, I really want to encourage that, you know, you guys take this up. And before doing so, I just want to say this is a safe space. Um, you know, it's a place for us to learn. I know some of you might feel uncomfortable doing this and perhaps worrying about what other people will think or worrying about getting it wrong. But I just want to say, you know, we're just here to practice and to learn. And, um, and whatever you do will be of benefit to other people as well. And so if that's you, please let me know. If you'd like to have a go at practicing, that would be fantastic. So example questions are, what would you say is a successful day? What would you say is a successful day? You know, what unique qualities could you bring to the civil service? What do you find is always left until last or undone on your to-do list? What do you enjoy in your spare time? What would you say is your biggest weakness? So these are examples of strength-based interview questions. So I'm just going to pick up one of those, one of these, uh, one of these question, example questions to go through how you could respond to, to uh, respond to it. So I, I'll go with what unique qualities could you bring to the civil service? So usually with questions like this, um, the challenges that can seem very vague, and you're probably thinking, how do I respond to that? How does this link? So first thing, you know, referring back to the competency framework, you think, okay, which competencies can I link this to? Again, the question might not directly give you a clue as to what competency area they're looking for. However, you can link it. So a perfect example that I can see, there is, you can use collaborating and partnering or building capability for all. So what unique quality can I bring into the civil service? So I can start by saying, you know, my unique qualities are I love, you know, one, I, I, I love working with people. I love developing people and seeing people achieve their full potential. So I can bring in my leadership qualities, my leadership skills and ability to motivate a team, particularly during challenging moments. What would follow, what would follow that naturally would be to give an example. Is it an example of when I have demonstrated this and this is where the star technique will then come into place. So I give an example of a situation where I've actually demonstrate managing a team during, you know, motivating the team during challenging situations. So I can say the moment was working. You can use examples from your personal life, such as um, could be from university, through, from working in group projects, or if you have worked or working currently, uh, you can use examples from there. Also, you can use examples from, even if you're working within the retail sector, you can also use those examples to, to give, give, give examples um, from your various background experiences in respect to wherever they are. So I can say the situation is we had to complete, um, complete a project by 2 p.m. the following day. So this led, so the task was, what was the task? So we had to go, we're set to, and I'm not being succinct at the moment. I'm trying to think of, uh, of, of, um, on my feet. So I'm not doing so well. So not the best example for you guys at the moment. So you can say a situation is, um, we're putting to a team to come with a, with a, a report for a client. I can use that example. The task was to create a 
a 50 page report for a client on how to engage uh, how to engage potential customers so action my role so we had a deadline to complete this by 5 p.m my role was to ensure that you know getting the team together and and um, assigning roles and responsibilities during the task during the task we overcame some challenges due, due to the time deadline due to the short time deadline however i ensured that the team morale were kept up and i did this by ensuring that everyone had a clear objectives had a clear vision on what the expectations are and also give them a clear guideline of um, how to conduct the research and also arranged a one-to-one -one feed uh, review session on how to measure people's progress that's an example of an action i've just made up on the spot but that gives you an idea of actually how you can use and, and frame the action part and what was the result um we completed the project on time the client was very satisfied and the feedback from the team was very positive. They found, you know, the, the, the tools and techniques that I provided to be very useful. And they commented that that played a key role in them achieving the project on time. That's the result. So that's how I've linked use building capability for all as a competency to that question that's asking about what qualities can I bring to the civil service? As an interviewer, that gives you an idea of actually saying, actually, you know what? Wow, this person clearly demonstrates the competencies. And another thing you may want to do is to use the key words such as collaborating and partnering as a hook. So it, you, it gives the person who watches the video, it shows them that you are actually familiar with the competencies. And there's nothing wrong with that to repeat back the questions or repeat back some of the key phrases from the questions or things that you know about the organization already. That's something that impresses a lot of uh, interviewers, especially when they watch the video back. So it shows that you know exactly, you understand what they're looking for, you've taken time to research it and you've studied it and practiced it. So that's really positive. You can make reference back to those as well. So I hope that gives an, uh, an idea of how to, you know, how, how you could address what may seem like an open-ended strength-based question, but still directing it using the STAR technique still directions and competencies and what the organization is looking for. So that's me done with the presentation. Any questions in the meantime? So this is why I really want to ask as many questions as possible and also use this chance to practice. If anyone, I hope someone will be willing to volunteer themselves to practice one of the other example questions. So. Do I have any takers and do I have any questions from anyone in the meantime? I know I've been talking at you guys for the last sort of 40 minutes. So this is a chance for you guys to ask questions and to really, um, you know, for me to hear from you to ensure that your expectations have been met. And if there's anything that has been explained clearly, please use this chance to do so. So I have my first, first question. So someone's asking, can I get an audio recording? This has been recorded. This has been uh, recorded on YouTube and I will be sending the link to everyone after this webinar. So someone's, uh, Bahashit has asked, how would you answer the first question? So how would I answer the first question? Okay. What would you say is a successful day? So if I was to ask someone now, just give me an example, what would be a successful day to you? I could ask if anyone can respond to what would you, what would a successful day look like to you? No response yet. Okay, so I'm gonna say, give an example of how to answer that. So to me, one thing you want to bear in mind, um, particularly 
bear in mind when you get questions like this is you always want to link it to something that's relevant to the competencies, the, the civil service competencies. You can use examples from your personal life or you can use examples from your study from university or from work. But the main thing is it has to be relevant. So you want to link it back, pull it back into the competencies and demonstrate how you've met these things. Because the danger is, especially with a question like this, is um, you would just say, for me, how, how I would have answered this question in the past would have been something along the lines of, oh, a successful day for me would be, um, you know, waking up on time or going to, going, to, uh, going to bed or going to bed at a certain time or meeting friends and going to the cinema, something quite generic and basic. However, how I would answer this question now would be something along the lines of, I'm thinking, what is this, what's the employer asking me? What's the interviewer asking What do they want to know? They want to see, they want to know about my personal life, but also see how I link it to the work, how this would fit in into the working environment. So a successful day would be, in the work context would be, um, if I am able to complete my to-do list on a, uh, the, my to-do list before, work finishes uh, before the close of business. So first of all, straight away, I'm thinking the competence that this links to um, is, just bear with me. So already this links to delivering at pace or managing a quality service. As an example, it doesn't have to be, it could also be linked to any of the uh, competency. So with that example, I would say a successful there would be being able to manage my task, I can do my task on time, um, and also ensuring that it is delivered at a high quality, uh, to a high quality standard. So it would be, um, so an example, how I've demonstrated this is um, I find that, you know, when I come to work, what first thing I do is I set my calendar and to ensure that I complete, I set my to-do list for the day, set times and when they'll be completed by and to ensure I finish it. And the days that I do so, I see that as a successful day. It's a long-winded summary, but that's an example I would say is a successful day for me when I able to actually complete my task that I've set for the day and also ensuring as a good standard and good quality. I can then say an example where I achieved this success. So a day, there's a, mo a day at work where I came into work, had a to-do list, planned out. However, a task came in that was urgent. So I had to ensure that I had to manage that as well as complete my to-do list. So what I did was I used, I prioritized my task. So that's the action I took. I can say I used an example of, um, I used a time management matrix to allocate my task towards urgent, important, not important, and not urgent, and to split the task. And this enabled me to focus on the things that are key and priority, um, not whilst also maintaining a good quality, maintaining my own to a good quality standard. The result of this, not only was I able to complete my task, it also reduced the pressure, the potential pressure that could have come as a result of being given an urgent task and to make sure that everyone was happy, I was happy, my land manager was happy, and to me, that's an example of a successful day. So that's how, how I would answer that question, uh, for example. Again, I could have been a, 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 you know, a bit more succinct and straight to the point. Again, this is where practice comes in handy, where you're able to practice in advance, uh, get your answers written down, and, um, and then practice it, practice it, practice it. So that's how I would answer that question, for example. I hope that, uh, hope that was helpful. Would anyone else like me to, is there any question you'd like me to practice? Any other question or perhaps you may have question that isn't on the screen that you'd like me to also practice as well. Any other question? So 
you want to say, guys? Let's, uh, you know, I hope. Is there anything that you'd like me to further to clarify further, or would like me to uh, to go back on to touch to uh, touch base on again? So I have a question from Beth. Um, because how would you answer a question about? why you want to work for the civil service that's a very good question okay so agatha sorry i didn't realize you wanted to speak okay i'm going to promote you shortly um okay i'm going to promote you agatha so we can hear you let me unmute the mic from here and i'll come back to your question shortly uh beth Okay, Agatha, can you hear me? You should now be able to speak or say something for us to hear you. Oh, I've lost her. Hi, Agatha, can you hear me? Can I ask you, you should be able to unmute your mic from your end. See if you can unmute your mic. Are you able to unmute your mic? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, perfect. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, I wasn't hearing, uh, I was, it was a kind of interactive um, um, discussion, so I decided to let you know that I can, I, I noticed you can hear me. Okay, did you have any question that you wanted to ask or would you do what you Not wanted really. to ask? I had, but they're all gone, isn't it? I, think I was. <laughs> I wanted to ask on the um during the is it the star techniques? Okay. Have you? But uh, I've forgotten because okay, I couldn't reach you at that point. Okay. Well, let's see if you can remember the question. I mean, you can let me know what the question is. I'll be able to answer it for you. Okay. All right. Fab. Okay, I'm going to unmute your mic again now. Okay, so I had a question from Beth, which, uh, one second, how would you answer a question about what you want, why you want to work for the civil service? That's a very good question. That's always a tricky question as well, that most people get confused about thinking actually what, what are they are expecting me to, to, to say. And Kelly, I'll come back to your question as well. I'm just going to go through Beth's question quickly. So the question is, normally with this, the first thing you want to bear in mind is, um, you want to be clear. They really want to understand your motivation for to, uh, why you want to work with the organization and to judge whether you, to judge whether you had not, whether you have the right intention, you know, is there a, normally they're looking for more long-term scope. So is this someone who would be with us? Do they see an opportunity for, do they want to be with us for the long-term? Do they want to grow within the organization or are they just looking to be here for the short-term? Really, they just want to make sure that they safeguard themselves, particularly against investment. As you would appreciate, you know, this is a uh, using public uh, public uh, money. So, whoever they bring in, they want to make sure that you know that the person has the intention to you know, they're committed to the civil service. They generally want to work for the civil service, and they have an intention to be within the civil service. So that's one reason when they ask that question. It's also an opportunity for you to sell yourself, to actually sell yourself in terms of like where you see yourself, what your, what your dreams are, what your career aspirations are uh, in terms of towards within the civil service. Do you see yourself, do you have the aspiration to actually progress into a senior, a senior leader within the civil service? 
you know, do you plan on a, what do you want to bring to the organization? What type of a, you know, why, why them? Why do you want to work there? You know, do you have ideas and things that might be of uh, benefit to the organization? So these are things that you really, that's also the opportunity to really get that across. Well, in this case, you want to pick what the key reasons are, but something that inspires the, the person who will read this so they feel like, wow, you want to actually have that you know, emotional reaction to, to, to be enrolled into what your reason for wanting to work there. So an example would, could be, you know, I, you know, I am passionate about, you know, making positive change uh, in society and making a difference and improving the lives of people. So what did the civil service look for? So again, things that you could, so you go back, you give examples of the, the competencies again. So there are ones such as collaborating and partnering, building capabilities for all, achieving commercial outcomes, delivering value for money. So you can use one of that if it relates to your reason as an example. So I could say, you know, I, you know, I am passionate about delivering value for money. And with, I know this is something that is important within the civil service to have people who, who deliver uh, value for money. So I can actually say, give examples, explain why I'm passionate about this. And then give an example of how I've demonstrated my passion for delivering value for money or building capability for all. So that's how you can potentially, how you can possibly ask, answer that question. So saying your why, but linking it to what they're looking for and give an example where you've demonstrated this and why. So if I can take that question, my answer to the next level by saying, I see the civil service as a, a, as a perfect ideal organization for me to, re to realize my passion at a grand scale. So not only am I, not only, you know, maybe I've demonstrated this within my local community. So it is an example of a project that you have done within your local community. You can make reference to that, where you can actually say, you know, you want to take this further by, you know, having, for this to actually have an impact at a national level and potentially global level. So whatever your vision is, the, what I'm trying to say is, be confident in selling that. Don't worry about how they, they if they're going to think. For me anyway, I used to think that, oh, would they think I'm too, like, too, uh, what's the word? You know, I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm too, I had an issue selling myself confidently is what I'm trying to say, and really say the exact reason why I want to work for an organization. I tend to keep that to myself. But the problem is when I did that, it didn't give the organization a chance into my vision as to why I really want to work for them. So the point I'm trying to make is just sell that freely. Whatever the reason is, sell it effectively and link it to the competency and give an example where you've demonstrated this and get them to see your vision. So I hope that answers your question, Beth. Um, just out of interest, if I was to ask you, why, why, you know, why, why do you want to work for the civil service? What would your response be? If you, you know, with why I've just explained, what, would, what, what are your reasons? Would you be able to share what your reasons are for why you uh, wanted to work at the civil service or for the civil service? So in the meantime, I'll respond to Kelly's question. So question, Kelly's question is, how honestly do you answer the biggest weakness question if there is no way you can spin it into a good thing? For example, as I feel as though saying you're a perfectionist is too generic. I, okay, I get, I get what you mean. So um, with that, the main thing is maybe, ref, you know, refrain from using the word weakness, but more of a, an area for improvement. So an area for improvement for me could be which I've done already in this, during this webinar is I tend to go on a lot. Um, so I'll say an area for improvement would be, you know, being succinct and getting to the point in a much quicker time frame. So I can then say if there are steps that I've already taken or steps that I am taking to improve that, then I can give those examples. So one could be, you know, I have, um, I've started attending a uh, receiving coaching or or um, practicing summarizing reports as a way to improve that. So already the competency that links to is building is not sorry is that the competency that relates to is you know collaborating and partnering or building capability for all. So actually it's more building capability for all. So it's looking at 
how I'm improving myself, how I am looking to learn to, you know, keep my learning up to date and keep my knowledge up to date. So already I'm demonstrating, I'm ticking the box of a competency that they're assessing in the video interview. So that's one way I would actually respond to that. And I've just made um, an error in my last, uh, in my response to Beth's question. I responded to that question using the building capability for all competency. Again, this is the, a perfect example of how, you know, to me, I interpreted building capability for all in that moment as, you know, looking for how I can actually improve the lives of the general public. In a different context, that could be used, that could be seen as a, you know, building capability for all. However, in the civil service context, what they mean by building capability for all is having a focus on continuous learning for oneself and others. And the reason why I believe this is a good example is how it's so important to, even though there's a word, some of these words that you might be familiar with, or you'd associate these words to mean different things in different scenarios, it's so important to understand them in, in the context of the civil service. So I made a mistake of thinking as interpreting building capability for all as you know, building capabilities for all, as in the general public and making a difference in, in, in the wider in wider society. But that is not what the civil service mean by building capabilities for all. They mean just having a focus on continuous learning for oneself and for others. So that's a that's an error that I made there. But it's also a, a really good example of how it's easy to misinterpret what they mean, uh, even if these words might mean different things to to you in different contexts or different organizations it might mean different things to them as well so i hope that i hope you guys find that useful and things to avoid and why it's also important to understand the different competencies before practicing the before doing the video interview so that's me it's now come up to uh 4 59 and see if, if there are any happy to answer any further questions so so Beth said, my reason happens to be exactly what you said. I want to impact people's lives. I have a passion for wanting to improve society, making lives better for those in poverty and reducing inequalities in the UK, advocating for fairer and more effective policies. Fantastic. And um, I'm sure something that I'm sure you've probably thought about this already, uh, something that, you know, you potentially add to that is, you know, if I was to ask you, are there places or moments where you have demonstrated these, um, what you've just listed, Beth? I think there's a fantastic reason, something that, you know, would already, you know, makes me feel like, wow, I'm engaged just, just by reading what your reasons are. So, so has, have there been situations or examples where you have demonstrated this or steps that you, have, you may have taken in demonstrating this or realizing this as a, you know, in your previous work, in your studies, perhaps a dissertation? Again, these are examples that you may want to link up to, to examples of your dissertation and how these are relevant. So are there any things that you could relate to? And whilst on that point, there's something I just want to add as well is um, ensure that every response, any response that you give are relevant to the civil service. I've fallen, I've fallen on this trap as well. The temptation to just say, you know, I want to talk more about the amazing organizations that I've worked with. Again, I sort of did that at the beginning of this webinar when I did an introduction about myself, which is great, you know, talk about this is what I've done, this company I've worked for, which is fantastic, nothing wrong with that. Um, however, it's important to ensure that there is a, a relevance to the point. And the relevance to me, the reason why I mentioned the things I've done before is to show you guys that, you know, in terms of my credibility within the industry and my background, how it's relevant to what I'm doing now. So it gives you that level of, oh, this guy, there's credibility here. He has experience in doing it so it gives you that level of trust and confidence in me as a presenter or a coach in delivering this session so that's an example that's the example of why that the relevance behind why i made that point so it's important that whatever point you give are all relevant to the question that's been asked and not just saying things to 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 for the sake of it or just just out of sheer excitement which is again nothing wrong with that but you want to always bear in mind that is this relevant and does this get my point across in the most effective impactful way so um, I hope that's been useful. Again, if you, uh, if, so, so Beth's response said, yes, when I interned, interned at a refugee charity, I advocated for women's refugee 
through hosting events and raising awareness. Excellent. So you can even build on that further by saying, you know, what did you do in that event? Uh, what actions did you put in play? What role did you play in hosting, in creating, putting together that event? You know, were there any leadership role that you took? Did you manage a team? Did you liaise with uh, stakeholders? Did you liaise with other partners? You really want to, you know, add more, i say add more flesh to the bone so they get to really delve into your world because the interview is a chance for you to uh, to say what you have done. Because something to bear in mind is the interviewer or the person who will be playing back the video have do not know anything about you or know what you have done in your past. Again, something that I used to, I used to uh, you know, fall, um, I also used to do this. I, I used to assume, you know, thinking like people should actually, you know, surely they know what, what you know, I never used to say fully what I've done. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, surely they know me. Until it dawned on me that, hang on a second, no, they don't know who I am. They've never met me before. So they don't know my history, my life story. So this is why it's important to actually use the interview to say all the wonderful, amazing things that you guys have done using the STAR technique to frame it in a short, succinct, succinct impactful way, giving examples and linking it to the competencies. Again, the danger is because of how the civil service test is, you go through the situation of judgment test, e tray you don't really get any, you don't really get a chance to sell, say more about yourselves. I know you get you have the opportunity to do so in the application stage, but this is a chance for you to say further, say more things that you have done that are related to the competencies. So that's a really good example, Beth. Um, yeah, I'll just say, you know, add a bit more, which I believe you probably were, were going to do anyway. So um, just to summarize again, you know, going through, the main thing is understand what the civil service is looking for. Give it, you know, write down moments where you have demonstrated that, just as just like Beth has done now. And um, use the star technique to say, to articulate what, what you did, what actions you did and what the results, the outcome of those actions were. And also bear in mind that you, all, you always want to link this to the four competency areas, which are collaborating and partnering, building capability for all, managing the quality service, and delivering at pace. Again, three things to be mindful of is when doing your interview, when doing a lot of the responding to interview is uh, doing a quiet place. Um, Try and avoid distractions. Give yourself about an hour so you feel relaxed. Dress as if you're dressing to a normal, uh, to a face-to-face -face interview. Uh, have adequate lighting in the room, and um, you know, be as presentable. Be be expressive. Be uh, relatable. Be positive. Engaging. Again, one final tip I would say is you may also want to stand up when responding to the questions, um, because what this does is it projects your voice, gives you a clear voice projection as well when responding to it. Smile, be yourself, which is always, always important. Be your normal self. Finally, don't focus on what you're not in control of. Don't focus on the future. Just stay present in the now and use this time. This is a chance for you to show how wonderful and amazing you guys are and all the wonderful and amazing things that you have done and to show yourselves and actually why you are you know, a potential fast streamer, a civil servant fast streamer. So I hope this has been useful. If you have any further questions and would like to touch base with us in the, uh, you know, to go for any questions before you start your test, um, you know, please ensure that you get in touch, um, um, get in touch uh, with me using the campus at elevationnetworks.org email. Um, if you have any final questions, please let me know. I'll spend another minute just to go for any final questions with you. Other than that, we've come to uh, come to a formal end um, of, of the webinar session. I just want to wish you guys all the best. And please let us know how you get on. Um, if you require further support or one-to-one -one support, please uh, you know, give us a, uh, drop us an email uh, we're to book something in where time, where there is a sort of available time slot to do so. Have a wonderful evening and thank you for your time.